Hey everybody, Adam Kokush here, and I know it's been a while since I've done a video about Bitcoin or cryptocurrency, so it's about time! Bitcoin is hitting new highs, over 4,700 now, very, very exciting stuff, and I wish I could say I've been around from the beginning, but uh, I did spend a lot of $5 Bitcoins on the Silk Road back in the day. Thank you, Ross Ulbricht, for making so many beautiful transactions possible, and we are working as hard as we can out here to get you out of prison. It's going to happen. I will die before you will die in jail. We are going to make that happen, Ross. But I want to talk today about some of the Bitcoin naysayers because, uh, you know, there are, uh, the future of Bitcoin is to displace fiat currency altogether. Now, maybe not Bitcoin. From the beginning, I've been a skeptic of Bitcoin itself as the be-all, end-all cryptocurrency. I don't think that Bitcoin is, is going to be the one that displaces everything. You know, not, not really a tough prediction, although I've debated Andreas Antonopoulos on this. And, and of course, in a very friendly way where I say, hey, I'm not the expert here, you're the expert. But he believes that Bitcoin is going to be the thing that does it. I think we're going to, ha we're going to see some uh, more practically applicable coin come along, whatever. But I, I want to talk about the, the, the naysayers today who uh, are, I don't know, just fearful of change, shills for the establishment. It's, it's really hard to tell. But I have a Google alert set up for Bitcoin, so I get an email every single day with uh, Bitcoin news. And I, I see this stuff all the time. And I just, it's, this video's been a long time coming because it just, it just bugs the hell out of me. Um, but you know what? It really doesn't because I know that the people... Now, see, I'm, I'm not a great investor. I, I, when people donate Bitcoin to me for freedom, I spend it on freedom. I take that Bitcoin and I turn it into freedom and we get the message out. Uh, I've dedicated my life to the cause of freedom activism. I'm not here for my own personal financial gain, obviously. I, you know, I've lost a lot of money going to jail and, and sacrificing for the cause. So that, that's not the case with me. But I want to say I, I'd be laughing all the way to the bank at these people if I was a better investor, like so many of my friends who took my advice way back in, uh, you know, 2000. Shoot, when were we talking about Bitcoin first? Uh, 2010? Geez, seven years ago? So uh, from CNBC, Bitcoin's nearly five-fold climb in 2017 looks very similar to the tech bubble surge. Yeah, like this is this is like a, oh yeah, this is terrible. It's like the tech bubble surge. Yeah, we're gonna the, the stocks are gonna be overinflated and then they're gonna correct and <clears throat> oh now now the internet's gonna be worthless. All these dot com stocks are gonna oh it's it's just a fad. It's like it's like the tulip bubble. Oh yeah, it's all gonna go away. Are you freaking kidding me? Like like right here. And and what's so funny is that these people are making these points half the time, well, always, they're, they're making these points to slam Bitcoin, and half the time, they're selling it, they're reinforcing it, it's nuts, like, yeah, so, this is the new pair, like, like, when, when, if you were during the dot-com bubble, you know, and, and it was fair to say that there was a temporary overinflation uh, of stock prices based on hype around the talk, the tech bubble, right, but, if you were around in the tech bubble saying, oh yeah, this is just a bubble, these tech stocks, this dot-com thing, it's like tulip mania, it'll all go away, and no one's going to care about the internet in 10 years. Yeah. No, the internet is here to stay. This is, this is, this is a revolutionary disruptive technology, and it's just, it's, 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 it's laughable. These, these are the people who would tell you to, to, to buy government bonds, you know? Um, Chicago Tribune. I love this. This is, this is the headline. Why investors should be wary of Bitcoin. Yeah, investors, you should be really worried if you're, if, uh, 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 and wary of Bitcoin because you might make a fuck ton of money. Holy shit. Yeah. Like, this is just, you know, but you should be wary because, because it's a competitor with the people who know that the Federal Reserve System pays their salaries, that if it wasn't for this money monopoly controlled by the banks and government, that, uh, you know, they'd all be out of a job because they're shilling for the establishment. So this week, Bitcoin, a relatively young synthetic currency that people used to buy items over the web, made headlines after hitting amazing Pibaba. So like every time Bitcoin spikes, the establishment is there to put it down and like, you know, suppress. it's, it's futile. It's ridiculous. 
Um, so here from now, now here's, okay. So now I get into the, uh, the sort of Bitcoin media stuff as well here. And I, I, I just, oh, I, Market Watch. Okay, wait, wait. Here's one from Market Watch. Before we get to the, the Bitcoin media stuff, does Bitcoin threaten economic stability? Yeah, because things are so stable when the Federal Reserve stably steals from the poor to give to the rich. Yeah, that's, that's great stability that you've got there. In 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto, the mysterious creator of Bitcoin, the first decentralized digital currency, Described as a purely peer-to-peer -peer version, blah, 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 blah. Does, does Bitcoin threaten economic stability? If by that you mean the stability of the system's ability to rip people off, yeah, it sure is. But I have, I have one little story here that I want to point out that uh, is, is from uh, Cointelegraph. And Cointelegraph, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't know that much about it. I've, I've uh, you know, run into a few people who work with Coin Telegraph, um, but I'm really, really disappointed in them as journalists because uh, they don't really seem to be on the side of freedom or integrity. And I know that's a big charge, and I'm doing this from limited information. What my I'll get to this, but the story that they have here: if Bitcoin goes mainstream, will ransomware too? Now I don't know. Maybe their point is that it that it won't, but they're they're you know pushing these buttons. And um, the thing is, they did an article recently on, uh, well, a few months ago, on my friend Thomas Costanzo, Morpheus, you might know him as, the, uh, the Bitcoin trader out of Phoenix, Arizona, who got rolled up. And he, uh, he, he's in federal prison, uh, facing federal charges for operating an unlicensed money transmitting business, which is sort of the new wave of how the federal government is cracking down on Bitcoin. One of the ways... And it's not, it's not, good. it's not really a threat to the Bitcoin ecosystem that the government is rolling up, you know, my friends who are doing this kind of day trading work, but uh, not day trading, excuse me, um, exchange, whatever, um, you know, the, the local Bitcoins. Morpheus was doing uh, sales in Bitcoin. He was traveling around Phoenix anytime someone called him uh, to do, to, to be able to sell Bitcoin for cash. And so when Cointelegraph did uh, their story about him, they really took the government side without questioning it. And I wrote them a long email explaining to them how they were wrong, asking them for an apology or a retraction or a correction. Not for me, but to Morpheus, because he's the guy rotten in jail for the cause of Bitcoin. And I never got a response. And now, I didn't just write uh, this email to the author of the story. I, I copied like every contact person uh, I could find on their website, and I got no response. And it's really sad that, you know, there are people who, you know, claim to be big boosters of Bitcoin. And again, I, I don't know anything about this organization. I just know that, you know, I see their articles. And generally, of course, they're, they're pro-Bitcoin stuff. But when you have this like honey honey poison thing you have to kind of be suspicious like bitcoin is great bitcoin is great but it's great how the government threw people in jail for using bitcoin and the government was so right about everything they said about that guy come on the fact is we live in a really exciting time and bitcoin is after the internet the most important disruptive technology of our generation uh, or rather cryptocurrency. I'm sorry. Sometimes, you know, everybody uses Bitcoin and, you know, I, I, I have to remind myself that it's not the brand of Bitcoin necessarily, but this concept of cryptocurrency, the cat is out of the bag. And one of the beautiful things about this is that it just, it, it really shows us who's future oriented, who's open minded, who believes in love and peace and freedom and moving humanity forward and who's afraid and who wants to stay in the past and who wants to keep sucking off the teat of the establishment and for one not me and i hope if you're watching this not you and if you haven't bought some bitcoin or whatever other crypto you think is going to be the one that goes to the moon and displaces fiat although some would say Bitcoin's already at the moon now, coming up on $5,000. A lot of happy investors. Now, I'll just say one last thing about that. If you hadn't bought Bitcoin, it's not too late. It's not too late. You think, oh, I should have bought $5 Bitcoin and I would have caught this thousand 
fold increase to it being worth five thousand dollars well hey bitcoin could go from five thousand to five million over the next few years you haven't missed anything yet we are still in the very very early stages of the cryptocurrency revolution and it's not too late to be a part of it and help overthrow the fiat currency system that is ripping so many of us off so anyway mwah, peace love screw the government